Hey everybody, it's the Drive School Podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman. Amelia, you're back. How's school going? It's going good. We're into the like full swing of things at this point, which is crazy. Okay. That's fantastic. What do you want to talk about then? Because like you've got a whole bunch of new stuff that's happening. You have new classes, you have new friends, there's people that are all back together. Um, and uh, everybody's had stuff to chew on over the summer. So there's new things going on. What, what's been going on? Right. So actually, um, one, I made a new friend, actually, a couple new friends. And they, yeah, and they became Anglican like over the course of college. And I told them that I was Lutheran and they're very excited because they're a very liturgical brand of Anglican and like um, pretty much believes the same as us in a lot of ways. But when I was talking to them, they told me that they were thinking between Anglicanism and Lutheranism when they were knew that they wanted to convert from evangelicalism. And okay. I was like, well, what made you decide Anglicanism over Lutheranism? And they said closed communion was kind of the immediate turnoff. Um, so my question is, how do we talk about closed communion to people who understand it differently than us? And also, um, I don't even know what I think about closed communion myself. So... I'd just like to talk about that too. <laughs> there we go. That's actually maybe the, the, the point in this. I have to lean forward in because you asked me <laughs> I'm excited about it. Um, how do we talk about it maybe versus how should we talk about it are two different things because most of the time we talk about it on our heels and at least a little bit embarrassed. Um, and right. I genuinely, truly believe that closed communion is a gift. And I'll say that insofar as we don't put words in the Lord's mouth. Um, what I mean by that is uh, we practice closed communion as Lutherans. And what that means is we believe that the Lord's Supper is truly the body and blood of Jesus for sinners to eat and drink for the forgiveness of their sins. And if it is the body and blood of Jesus, we take then uh, not only Paul's uh, a description of the Lord's Supper, that what it is and what it does, but also we take Paul's description of what it can be if it's used wrongly, very seriously, that, that Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 says that people have been hurt and harmed by communing improperly. Um, and so when it comes to this, um, that doesn't mean that uh, there are some people who are not allowed to commune, but it might mean that there are some people who might not be allowed to commune yet. I think we need to, to confuse or stop confusing no and not yet uh, for, for a number of reasons. Um, because like I'm a convert. Um, I, I actually, uh, my first interaction with Lutheranism was in college. Uh, and um, like I can tell it from a, a personal level. Um, my very first church service, um, I, I sat in the back row and I wanted everybody to leave me alone because I, I was embarrassed to even be there because I was pretty. I, I, I maybe I wasn't an atheist, but I was very proudly agnostic because that sort of let me slide with a lot of things. I didn't know how to read him. So like I tried to read every line on the top paragraph instead of reading just the top line. And then the second, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, when it came time for communion, I watched um, like a dozen college kids go up there and treat it very seriously. And I wasn't allowed up there yet. Um, and by the backs of their necks, I knew that something was up there. I had no idea what it was. But it was serious enough that um, it, it wasn't just do whatever's in your heart. It was real. And it was serious enough that they took it seriously. A and to me, that, that said, there's something there worth exploring. That's, that's a personal thing. That's an anecdotal thing. Um, but what I also have, have sort of found in practice is that um, I don't know that I've ever come across a church that doesn't practice closed communion. Every, every single church to some degree. So um, we can go to the Anglican church there. Um, and I, I would bet uh, most of the things that I own, that there are at least some people in that church that don't commune. And they might be toddlers. But why aren't they allowed to? They don't believe it yet? I don't know. Like They're not confirmed? I They're... But you're for putting up a whole lot of you're closing off a whole lot of things here though um but like my my two-year-old knew that it was the body and blood of jesus um when when he was two he's 12 now and, and has been confirmed um but like if it is really just sort of a, a place where we remember jesus you can do that at two um right 
why why are you not letting your own people up there for communion but you're letting up complete strangers who you don't know whether or not they believe mm. that's I've, really interesting i've come across this um when i went to target um because <laughs> if if my kids are bad in target um i will i will i will i'll yell at them i will yell at my kids <laughs> in target but you know what's hilarious when other people's kids are bad in target I love watching other people's kids be bad in target. I'm a bad person. I know, but like, I don't yell at them for that. I just watch. That's funny. Um, this is this is not close communion though. This is just don't yell at me communion. Um, when when I won't let my kids play in the street, but I don't care what the neighbors' kids are doing, that doesn't show how much I love the neighbors. That just says I'm going to take care of my own. What does it say that that your your that this congregation will not give communion to an eight year old, but will give it to a stranger? If anybody who loves the Lord and believes can come up. It kind of gives this idea that they don't care as much, almost like they don't care as much about their own or like aren't thinking about it. It's it's weird. It's a weird like. I think it's probably the other way around. Um, because they they clearly care more about their own. Um, it's not that they don't care about you, but but it they, that's their kids. They they want to make sure that they're taught, they want to make sure that that they're, they're instructed, that they brought up in good time. Um, it's that they, they trust that they'll be back enough that they can say, not yet. Because it is, it's not a no, they can't commune. It's just a not yet. And in the same way, um, when, when we bring our friends to church, I think the first thing we wanted to, when we start to talk about closed communion, is acknowledge that it's a real thing. But it doesn't mean no. It just means not yet. I want to talk to my friend as if they might actually come back to the church and not as if they have to endure it once. Because if you're only coming once and you just have to endure it, you're right. Um, for, for this particular thing, this this is a place where I'm going to need to stay back. And we can talk about it, and we will, but I, I don't expect you to ever come up here. And that, I think, is is far less loving than I would love to talk to you more about communion. It's a thing that I would love to to, to share with you um, as, as a brother in Christ, as a sister in Christ, but it's not a today thing. It's a not yet thing. Uh, we, we, we should just talk a little bit more, and we can talk about why. And that already is kind of more open than like just closed. Like, cause closed communion kind of, as you're saying, just sounds like that's it. You're done. You can never be up there. But when you have this like change in the way you're talking to people, mm -hmm. then it's automatically more like open in a sense. Right. And so it's, it's not a no, it's a not yet because that's how our Lord treats it. And that's why I don't want to put extra words in his mouth because he never says no. He just says, not yet. Um, he, he says, I don't want anybody to commune wrongly. I don't want anybody to commune to their harm. And so if there's a chance for this, now is not a good time for you to commune. And even, even insofar as excommunication, that's a thing. Uh, if somebody is, is grossly unrepentant of their sins, they might be told, you cannot commune yet. And, and that yet is still contingent. I want you to receive this safely, not in unbelief and not to your harm. So like, let's, let's start with the idea that first every church wants to instruct people and then bring them up to communion. We see it because they take care of their kids this way. I'm just asking that we treat our strangers the same way we treat our kids, more loving, not less. Um, but That but is a good there, way to kind of connect with them. It's like yeah. when you're talking to people, it's like, well, you don't let everyone get baptized right away. If you're talking to evangelicals, like why would you <laughs> for their, in, in your opinion, for their good? Um, <laughs> I would disagree with that, but um, in the same way for like our good and our own good, we don't let other people commune right away because they just don't know. We don't let strangers. Yeah. Right. And, and so we can talk about this then. Um, like, and then let's just grab hold of things. So like first we believe it is what the scriptures say. Um, and because of this, let's not start with whether or not it's good or bad or even good or bad for you, but let's start with whether or not it's powerful. Um, because this is a, a place to, to talk. Um, do you believe that communion is powerful? If it's just a symbol or, or, or is there something more to it? If there's something more to it, is it powerful? Right. It's, it is powerful and there is something more to it. There has to be. Right. You gotcha. automatically hold it with reverence. Sure. Like because his word speaks this way. So, so let me ask it to you this way then. Are there more laws in the United States of America regarding feathers <laughs> or firearms? <laughs> Definitely firearms. <laughs> right. And there's a reason. One is a lot more powerful than the other. Right. It's not a question of is a firearm good or evil. It's a thing. 
It can be used for great good and it can be used for great evil. Lord have mercy. But because it is powerful, we set up we set up fences around it to make sure that anybody who uses one uses one safely. The feathers mm-hmm. I'm less concerned with because like it's a little tickle. I don't, I don't like it, but <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> if communion is powerful, then we want to we want to do this as, as if it is real. Um, if, if first and foremost, what we're saying with this is that it is a real thing, and you don't have to share our belief, but we believe that this is a real thing. We're not saying you're not a Christian. We're not saying you're not welcome in this church, but we're saying that this is a powerful enough thing where if this was a car. I wouldn't just hand you the keys and say, well, you know, you love God, drive. Um, I would say like, do you know, do you know what you're doing? Um, you and me, we share a special skill. Um, we, we drive, we drive stick shifts, right? Yep. It's, yeah. It. It's, it's just a flex. Um, do you, do you <laughs> let anybody drive your car or do you like check on this? I definitely check. And it's, it's me driving the car or my dad. That's like end of story. Right. And that's because it's your baby, but also because like, what if, what if you mess up and, and hurt somebody, hurt yourself? Communion is powerful. It is, it can be used for great good. It can also be a, a source of harm if it's misused. So we want to make sure that it is used correctly, which is why it's never a no, but it's, we should talk about it so that when you come up here, it's for your good. It's never a no, but like, what if we talked more about it? What do you think? I, I, yeah, I really like the idea of talking more about it first, because then we can find, even if it's not common ground, it might be something where it's less of almost an insult to them. Because a lot of the times when I try to invite people over to my church, it's kind of, um, almost offensive to them that they cannot come up to commune. Um, and so like starting with the, okay, well, what do we believe about this? Mm-hmm. might be a more kind way to talk to them about it. Right. And honestly, it's, it's a way that speaks to, especially the, your, your friends that are sort of navigating their lives away from evangelicalism toward Anglicanism, because I'm assuming because they see a depth and a richness to the practices right. there. Absolutely. Okay. Well, in the same, like real talk, if we're embarrassed of it, it's going to be read that way. If we're ashamed of it, then it's a thing that, that should be despised. Like if I'm ashamed of what I believe, I don't know that I would re- readily invite other people to believe in the thing that I'm ashamed of believing. Um, but at, at the same time, if I can say like, this is profound, this is the most profound, deep, rich mystery. And you can see it from the back of my neck this week. And I would love to talk more about it, but there's more here than, than we're going to be able to cover in the two minutes before church, because there is a depth, because there is a richness. Right. Um, I've, I, yeah, I've experienced that when I'm talking to them. It's kind of like this, like, uh, shy, I'm a little shy about talking to it almost where I'm like, yeah, this is a little awkward. We have closed communion. We're just that one church versus like, instead mm-hmm. of talking about, no, this is what we believe in like communion in and of itself. Um, that, yeah, it's a lot stronger of an argument and it's, I believe it. So Right. So like, this is actually it. It, it, Closed communion is a gift. It's a curse if people are just never allowed to come. But we don't, we don't believe that we just want them to come safely. We want them to come with with a a full knowledge and appreciation to receive for their good, the forgiveness of their sins. And that's the thing to lean into. Like, look how much cool stuff's happening here. I want to talk to you more about it. Um, And and there's another side to it, too, uh, because to commune in a church, uh, it's, it's, it's actually in this, it's common union, I have everything in common here. Um, Which means uh, not only uh, are you saying before the Lord, this is your true body and blood, but you are saying before your brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm on board with the stuff that it's happening here. And so uh, again, like this is a, another place to sort of say this. You, maybe you don't believe that this is the body and blood of Jesus. Do you really want to sign up and say before God and everybody here that you do? Because to commune here says, I'm on board with all these things happening here. And I just don't want to put words in your mouth. It, it's, it's, dis, it, it's disingenuous for me to sort of say, listen, there, everything that we believe can uh, be summed up in uh, I love Jesus. And then you, you, you do that, but then you, you, you come back a second time and you realize, I don't believe in any of this stuff, but I just promised before. God and everyone else I did. That's the far more embarrassing thing. I, I, I want to talk to you about what we believe, but I also, I want you to have a chance to make sure that you're, you're willing to confess that you believe this stuff because it's, it's not a, you can't come, but it's a, you should, you should be able to make this with an understanding of what it is you're signing on to. 
Right. And that's why we wouldn't commune at a church that believes that the Lord's Supper is just a symbol because we'd be in essence, like proclaiming that we believe what that church believes. Um, I think a lot of confusion that comes up with some of my friends is like, well, if you believe that, if you believe that, um, the, the Jesus says that this is my body and my blood, and it's actually his body and blood and it's for the forgiveness of sins, then how is it that he can't work through that? Like Mm -hmm. through different people believing different things, like, does that stop it? Like if, if someone else believes differently, (laughs) This is a a much deeper conversation and people kind of wrestle with this. So I want to kind of come at it from from two angles, because first, like I also I wouldn't commune in a Roman Catholic church, even though they do believe that it is the body and blood of Jesus. But it's because like I also I don't believe that you you are saved through the second plank of penance. I, there are there are parts of the Roman Catholic Church that I, I just cannot sign off on before the Lord, and so I don't want to. Um, is it the body and blood of Jesus? We would simply ask the church to say. Um, and so if the church says, no, this just represents Jesus, it's, he's not actually here, I'm willing to take the church's word for it and say that's not a thing I want to sign off on. Um, and in the same way, your personal faith is an incredibly important thing, but what you confess it is ac- actually does matter. And and so uh, for this in mind, um, do you believe that the uh, the sign of the rainbow is a great promise from the Lord? Yes. What, is, what do you think that yeah. the rainbow means? I I think that it's a symbol of promise and hope that God gave to Noah and to all the people in the Old Testament and like even like us today in a sense, but it's definitely you're putting break in a wooden <laughs> Yeah. So like I was just about to ask for this great promise and you have a rainbow flag hanging from your door. Yeah. You do? Yeah. No, I do not have a <laughs> rainbow flag hanging from my door. I'm just saying <laughs> no, I don't have a rainbow flag hanging from my door. Oh, it's but this just is it. It, it would make misused. Sense. It would make a confession to other people that you don't know that you want to make. Um, and so for the, this part of closed communion, what it is and what it's doing is very important. But also, what are you saying by doing it here actually matters. Um, and so we can go then to like the, the ugliest sides of the pool. And this is all hyperbole. And so it's not fair argumentation, but it's, it's hyperbole and I love it. So I'm going to do it anyway. Um, do you want to commune with unrepentant Nazis and child rapists and say like everything on board here is good. I I, I don't, I don't know. No, I I don't want to be associated with that. Um, you know what, because I, I can't sign my name to what they're doing. Um, and in the same way, um, when a church practices something that, that before the Lord, you're like, I'm not so sure I can sign off on this. I'm not saying you're not a Christian. I'm truly not, but I'm saying like, we have more to talk about here. And I'm not saying I won't see you up there. I will. And up there, there will be no more disputations or any of these things. But but down here, sadly, there are. Um, What I want to focus on is if if you can say the points of the creed, if you believe that, that Jesus, who is God, died and rose again, we'll see up there. God be praised. Um, I, I, I have a, a common union here already, but we still have some things to work out. And, and so in the meanwhile, um, let's, let's actually be honest about it because those are the better conversations. Like, honestly, if, if, if everybody just sort of says we mostly get along and, but we don't talk about anything, that's not a great friendship. The, the great friendships are the ones where you like, you can dive into like the, the, the details you can say, this is right. a place where I agree with you. This is a place where I think differently than you. This is a place where I disagree with you. And that's where things actually, that's where you learn more about your faith. That's where you learn more about theirs. It, that's a good thing. Those are the most important conversations to have. I, like some of the most important, I think. I and agree. Strength, strengthening faith on both sides. Sure. So like when it comes to, to close communion, to, to kind of put a bow on it, um, talk about it as if it's a gift instead of a curse. Um, talk about it because as it is if, a gift. Yeah, because our Lord gives it and he doesn't give bad gifts. He doesn't give curses. Um, and, and then second, talk about it as if it's a not yet, not a no. I, and then when you talk about it, it's no longer, this is a thing I'm ashamed of, and this is a thing you can't have. And so it's not a thing I'm even all the way on board with, but but rather this is this flows out of what I believe about communion. And I actually want to talk to you more about it so that you, you hear, believe, and, and confess the same. And you can hopefully receive it with us too. Yeah. That there's that hope there as well. 
Right. That's just it. It takes time, space, and a whole lot of hope because like that, that kid who sat in the back row of the church and didn't know how to read hymns um, and, and watch the backs of necks might never have ever come back again. Like, honestly, he, he might have said, well, I can't come to your club. You don't want me here. I'm out. This isn't a loving place. Um, and it, it, was, it was a move of great faith by my pastor then, um, even though he wasn't even my pastor yet to say, if the Holy Spirit's going to drag him back here, the Holy Spirit's going to drag him back here and I'm going to teach him when he's here. Um, and bit by bit, I was taught. And when it became a good practice for me to receive communion, I was baptized. I, I was brought up to the rail and I received it with, with great joy. That's, that's what we want more of. And that's, that's where closed communion becomes a gift. Because if I just walked up there, took it, had no idea what it was and left, not only could I have hurt myself at the, the rail and I would have, um, but, but more so, I never would have grown to appreciate and, and to receive the good gifts that it was now. Right. And part of that gift is that we get this beautiful, like, foretaste of the feast to come, foretaste of the joy and the happiness that we get in, in the feast to come in the resurrection. And that's beautiful. I love it. So uh, that was a good first week of school conversation. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you for, for hanging out at the drive school. Can we come back and do it again soon? I'd love that. Me too. Have a good one.